Good morning. It's good to see you here as we gather for worship around uh, Word and Sacrament, celebrating Christ's presence with us. Also, I'd uh, like to welcome those who are worshiping online. We do hope and pray that this worship experience will be meaning for you in your journey of faith. To all of our fathers who are here today, we wish, if you, we wish you a happy Father's Day, and we hope that uh, you're enjoying the blessings of your family on this, this day. The only announcement that I have is a reminder that a week from this Thursday, uh, the 30th, we will have our uh, monthly fellowship luncheon. Uh, information about that is in the bulletin, and more information will be forthcoming, or you can speak to Pam. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. Please turn and face the processional cross and turn to the front as the cross passes. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
with you. And also you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading this morning is from the Old Testament. It's from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah has done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. He left his servant there, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Good morning. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 42. Found in your bulletin insert, we'll read it responsibly by half verse. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so long my soul will flee, O God. 
My soul is a thirst for God, a thirst for the living God. My tears have been food day and night. I pour out my soul when I think of these things. With the voice of praise and thanksgiving. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? Put your trust in God. My soul is heavy within me. One deep calls to another in the noise of your cataracts. The Lord grants his loving kindness in the daytime. I will say to the God of my strength, why have you forgotten me? While my bones are being broken, all day long they mock me. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? Put your trust in God. The second reading this morning comes from Galatians chapter 3, verse 23 through 29. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came so that we may be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you were baptized into Christ, have closed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Jesus and his disciples arrived in the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the the bonds and be driven by the demons into the wild. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off, and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away proclaiming throughout the city, how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of the Lord. may be seated. Before I begin the sermon, I just want to uh, uh, say something about the sad news we heard this week uh, from Alabama. As you may have heard in the news, St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in uh, Vestavia Hills, just outside of Birmingham, experienced a great tragedy when three of uh, their members were shot to death by uh, a person who had come to one of their uh, uh, gatherings at the church. That tragedy hit uh, Bishop Kendrick especially hard. You may or may not know that that was the church he served before he became our bishop. And he knew each of the three victims personally and had... uh, um, shared some significant pastoral acts with, with them, uh, baptized, or, uh, well, baptized the grandchildren of, of, of one of the victims, had buried the husband of another one, and still another uh, important act of ministry to the third one. Their church is at worship today, um, and that's moving forward in faith, knowing that even in the midst of tragedy, we have an Easter faith that... Uh, We do face our Good Fridays. We do face terrible experiences in life. But Christ is always with us. And in the resurrection, we have hope that uh, uh, God still holds us in his hands and God 
is with us and loves us. So uh, we want to uh, certainly lift up in our hearts and prayers the people of St. Stephen's and the rector who serves that congregation as well as our bishop. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Heavenly Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Fred Craddock, who was uh, one of the great preachers of the last half of the 20th century, uh, shared an experience that he had while he was vacationing with his wife in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. While they were there one evening, they uh, found a nice little secluded restaurant and decided that they would go there to uh, have a, a quiet dinner together and, and just share that time with one another. While they were there and uh, looking over the menus, preparing to order their meal, they noticed that there was an elderly, distinguished, very distinguished looking man with just uh, a shock of, of white hair that was uh, going around to the various tables and, and talking with, with the people who were there. Well, Craddock, wanting this special time with his wife, uh, really didn't want to have any intrusions, and he kind of leaned over and whispered to his wife, I sure hope he doesn't come over here. But it was just a few moments later that the man did come over and uh, greeted them and said, uh, hey, good to see you, where are you from? And uh, Craddock said, uh, we're from Oklahoma. He said, I've never been to Oklahoma, but I heard it's a nice place. What do you do? And uh, Craddock said, well, I teach homiletics at a seminary. And the man looked at him and said, so you teach preachers how to preach? <laughs> yeah. He said, well, I have a story to tell you. And as he pulled out the chair and took a seat, Craddock was, was, was kind of rolling his eyes and thinking to himself, oh boy, another preacher story. Everybody has preacher stories. The man began, he said, uh, I was born not too far from here, just over those mountains. And uh, when I was born, my mother wasn't married. Now this was, he was born, this man, back in 1870, so uh, a birth out of wedlock back then was uh, much more scandalous uh, than it is today. And uh, anyway, he, he went on to say, uh, by the way, my, my name is Ben Hooper. When I was growing up, I, I really had it tough. Uh, very difficult life growing up. Uh, kids at school, uh, they had a name for me that wasn't very nice, and they said things that were, were very, very hurtful to me. And so um, when there was recess, I would stay off by myself, and I'd go eat my lunch alone because they just said so many hurtful things. He said, as bad as that was, it was even worse on Saturday morning when we went to town because uh, when we walked into town, everybody started staring at me. And uh, I could almost read their thoughts, wondering, okay, who is his father? As he told the story, he said that, uh, as a boy, I used to go to church, but I would, would come in a little late and leave a little early, so I wouldn't have to endure the, the looks on the people. He said, then, when I was about 12, we we got a new preacher, and one Sunday, he, he ended the service a little early, said the benediction real fast, and that was before I had a chance to get out, and so I was stuck amidst all those people going out the door, and all of them were looking at me, wondering, who is your father? Yeah. Anyway, uh, he said, when I got, got to the, just before I got to the door, there was, was a big hand that just 
plop on my shoulder. And I kind of looked up and I saw that the preacher was looking at me. And the preacher said to him, um, who's your father? Whose boy are you? And Hooper said, I just knew it. There was a dark cloud there that he was going to pass judgment on me like everyone else. And he said, when, when the preacher said that, everybody looked to see what, what he was going to say. And just a moment after saying, uh, whose boy are you? A big smile came on his, the, the preacher's face and he said, I know, who you, I know whose boy you are. I can, I can see the family resemblance. You are God's child. And with that, he gave uh, Hooper a little pat on the behind and, and said to him, you have a great heritage, great legacy. Go claim it. He went on and, and talking with the Craddocks, and he said, that was the first time in my life anyone had ever said a word of encouragement to me. And I've never forgotten it. And with that, uh, Hooper stood up and shook the Craddock's hands and went on to another table where he seemed to be talking with some real old friends. Now, Craddock was was born and raised in Tennessee, and he, re he remembered from his study of Tennessee history that only two times in the history of the state had the people of Tennessee elected a governor who was born out of wedlock. And he remembered that one of those was a man named Ben Hooper. I wanted to share that story uh, with you on Father's Day uh, to remind parents, and especially dads, how important it is to speak words of encouragement to our children, assuring them that they are loved, that they are special. And it's important for us to remember that our, our children are special because they are God's children. In a sense, our children are on loan to us from God. I know there are times we wish we could give them back, but uh, they belong to God. And God wants us to treat them with great love because they are his children and they are precious to him. In the gospel that was read just a few moments ago, we heard the story of the, the Gerizim demoniac, the uh, man who is possessed by demons that have made a shambles of his life. The poor man, his life is a train wreck. Nobody loves him, nobody wants to be around him, not even his family. The Gerizines are, are, are so afraid, so terrified of him that they they keep him shackled and bound in chains. And yet, even that isn't uh, complete protection because when the demons possess him and, and cause him to go into a rain, rage, he even breaks the chains. This is a man who has no life. His life has been taken away from him by the demons that possess him. Even in those times that he's in his right mind, he is still shackled because no one knows when the next explosion of rage is going to occur. We can only imagine how empty 
his life must have been. No family, no friends, no hope that his life is ever going to be anything other than what it is. No nothing, nada. His life is just a black hole of emptiness. As Jesus comes to that area, he sees the man and he understands the needs. And he reaches out to that man and, and casts the demons out, giving that man back his life. It's interesting that uh, the man wants to follow Jesus and, and Jesus, as he does on so many occasions when he's giving someone significant gift of healing and they express the desire to follow him, he sends them back home. He tells him to go home and tell everyone how much God has done for you. Jesus gives the man back his life. This morning, as we reflect on this gospel, and as we reflect on that experience Fred Craddock shared with about uh, Ken Hooper, or Ben Hooper, excuse me, it's important for us to understand how powerful our words of encouragement can be. Our words have the power to bless, but they also have the power to curse. Now, obviously, what God is calling us to do as parents and as Christians is to speak words that bless, that uplift the lives, not only of our children, but of all the people we encounter in the course of daily life. To speak words of blessing so that even in the midst of their brokenness, they can be made whole by the power of God's love. As parents, as Christians, God wants us to share his love with our children and with all people that experiencing the grace and love of God. They might grow into the kind of people that make our world a better place in which to live. May that peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand and let us confess our faith by use of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. 
With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Three found in your bulletin insert or the Book of Common Prayer on page 387. Father, we pray for your Holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially our bishops Michael and Russell, and our priest in charge, Pastor V. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, especially our President Joe. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us now pray for our own needs and those of others. Remembering the needs of our St. Jude family and friends in our daily prayers, we'll now uh, read the members with special needs and friends with special needs. Susan, Jerry, Jane, Anne. Carol, Risa, Charles and Mary, Carolyn, Claudette, Howard, Chris, Thomas, Doris, Leo, the Douglas family, Charlotte, Mary, the President and the people of Ukraine, Mary, Marty, Gianna, Ron, Mike, and Kim. We also remember those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, Phyllis, Jerry, and Kathy. We remember men, members and friends deployed by the military, McGuire, Jonathan, Shannon, and chaplains who serve. In the body of life, we remember uh, for each of us to invite someone to encounter Christ with each of us next Sunday. Please turn to the back and we'll read the St. Jude's Search Committee prayer together. Almighty God, giver of every good gift, look graciously on our church and so guide the minds of the search committee and all the members of St. Jude's who shall choose a rector for this parish, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for your people and equip us in reaching up, reaching out, and reaching in in all our ministries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we also pray for the people of St. Stephen's Church, that you will comfort them in their hour of grief and that you will be with their rector to be able to speak your words of comfort and hope in this their time of great sorrow. And now into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. Our Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. By the word and promise of our Lord Jesus Christ, as we eat this bread, we partake of his true body. As we drink this cup, we partake of his true blood.
Come, for all is now ready.
the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Go into the world to be and make disciples for Christ. <laughs> 